Hello, I'm Camillus. Today I'm going to talk about the Shang Dynasty. Let's get started. Yixia Dynasty. Since the 14th king Kongjia, more and more vassal state rebels. Until the last king Jie, Xia Dynasty is already very weak. In the same time, eastern vassals are very strong. Finally, the eastern vassal Shang defeats Xia Dynasty. The ancestor of Shang is named Xie. He lived in the same time with Yu, who is the creator of Xia Dynasty. Xie once worked together with Yu to prevent the flood. He did a great job and gained good reputation among people. The king Shun gives Xie a big land in the east. Then he creates his vassal state Shang. Until the end of Xia Dynasty, the power of Shang vassal state already passes to the 14th generation Cheng Tang. During these 14th generations, its capital city changes eight times. Xie creates the vassal state in today's Tang, Shandong province. His son Zhao Ming moves to Di Shi. This place is unknown. His grandson Xiang Tu moves to Shangqiu, Henan province. The 14th leader Cheng Tang grows up in Hua, Henan province. He moves the capital several times in his life. When he becomes the leader, capital is in Anyang, Henan province. The other locations of the eight capitals are unknown. Cheng Tang has organized his army to fight against Xia Dynasty. He first attacks the vassal Wei and Gu, then the vassal Kun Wu, and in the end, Jie, the king of Xia Dynasty. Vassal Gu is located in today's Fan, Henan province. Vassal Kun Wu is located in today's Xuchang, Henan province. But its original location may be in Hebei province and it gradually moves to Henan province. In the end of this war, Cheng Tang has defeated Jie in Yousong, which is today's Yongji, Shanxi province. Jie runs away to Mingtiao and dies on the halfway. Mingtiao is an unknown place, but we know that Jie runs towards the southeast. Cheng Tang's military base is in the east, but Jie doesn't run to the west, which is much safer. Probably, it's because the western side is still wildland. There is no civilization yet. After Jie is defeated, Cheng Tang becomes the new king. Shang Dynasty has entered the stage. The information about Shang Dynasty is more precise than Xia Dynasty. Xia Dynasty lasts 417 years. It has 17 kings in total. Shang Dynasty lasts 554 years, but there are 13 kings. Because in their culture, when the king is died, power often passed to the king's brother, not always to the king's son. The creator Cheng Tang is a great king, and after he died, the fourth king Da Jia, the ninth king Da Wu, the thirteenth king Zhu Yi, the 19th king Pan Geng and the 22nd king Wu Ding are all good kings. And during the period of Wu Ding, Shang Dynasty's power reaches its peak. Mulan is well known around the world because of the Disney cartoon. Yet she is not the only, neither the first female hero in Chinese history. The earliest recorded female military leader and politician is Fu Zi. She lives 1,000 years before Mu Lan. Fu Zi is the wife of Wu Ding, the 22nd king of Shang Dynasty. She is one of the greatest military generals, has defeated many enemies around the country. 
She once led 13,000 soldiers to attack the Western Qiang. This is the biggest recorded army at that time, which is more than half of the soldier of Shang Dynasty. Nevertheless, the first recorded military ambush in Chinese history is done by Fu Zi and his husband Wu Ding. However, there are still many questions about this female hero, including her name. Fu Zi is maybe not her true name, but a title of a job position. Because in the ancient school, there are more than 100 years between the earliest and the latest record about Fu Zi. Because the king's power can pass to brother, so the right of inheritance in this dynasty is very complex. Shang Dynasty moves its capital at least five times. Someone says it's in order to escape from the inundation, but most of the historians believe that it's because the royal household fight each other fiercely, and the winner often set up his capital in a new city. The crater Tang sets up the capital in Shangqiu, Henan province. The 10th king Zhongding moves to Xingzhe, Henan province. The 12th king He Danjia moves to Neihuang, Henan province. The 13th king Zhu Yi moves to Xingtai, Henan province. The 19th king Pan Geng moves back to the crater city Shangqiu. The 27th king Wu Yi moves to Anyang, Henan province. The 13th and the last king Di Xing moves to Zhao Ge, which is today's Qi County, Henan province. According to the change of its capital, Xiang Dynasty's power center is always around the Yellow River in Henan province, but the next dynasty Zhou has expanded its territory much more to the western side. Since Zhou Dynasty, Chinese history starts to have a reliable and continuous recordation. In the next video, I will bring to you more profound and interesting stories. Thanks for watching. I'm Camillus. I have a message to the world. See you next time.